You are now listening to FemRegard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm, Fem. Hey, Fem Fam. It's your girls, Tessa and Carolina. Hey. So, you know, every now and then we like to just throw in, in case you are a first time listener, um, this podcast is all about indie filmmaking from everything from actors to producers to directors to entertainment lawyers to people that source the music for for films and you know it's just it's everything all across the board so we love to bring you exciting guests and today's um carolina actually worked with her on a film which i'll let her talk a little more about in a moment but she really her bread and butter is writing so you kind of get to hear all the different parts of her career and what she does and we'll go into a lot more detail but her name is suhashini krishnan and sushi for short so we call her And uh, Carolina, why don't you talk about how you met her and the project that you guys worked on together? Yeah, so, uh, so just blessed to have met such an incredible, hardworking human like Sushi. She's just um, someone I I really like. You can just tell, like, I've talked about her in the past season. Yeah, if you're not a first time listener, you've definitely heard Carolina talk about her. (laughs) know who she is and I'm just so glad we finally could get her on and really break down the success of the company we keep which is the short film that I worked on with her and you'll get to hear the whole story of how that came to fruition and how we met um on the show but really I think it's telling that um you know good people attract good people Mm -hmm. and and hard work pays off (laughs) And hard work pays off. And I love that we talk about going through a full throttle. That's just kind of how we all operate. And um, and she just, I, I actually learned a lot too about the writer's journey inside that she's had. I didn't like really ever had a chance to go full dive. So this episode is really great to to understand like, and just like, just to her, to her different paths. And I think we can all relate to that. You know, we're all going to stray and, and think we should be doing one mm-hmm. thing when really, you know, it comes back to what you're passionate about is always going to serve you the best. Yeah. If you're coming and back to it, there's a reason. There's a reason. So keep creating, babes. Fem fam, we got you. We're here to support, uplift. Yes. And I hope you enjoyed this very real, very uplifting <laughs> insightful episode with sushi well again to our listeners who've heard me talk again and again about the short film the company you keep that i worked on as a unit production manager associate producer We finally have the writer and head producer of the film on our show. Hello, Sushi. Thanks for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I just love that this all stemmed from the Facebook film crew (laughs) that I applied to. Like, she doesn't, you don't even remember posting it. That's like how insane, like long ago, crazy. I, yeah, I do remember posting it, but I think I was oh, that's good. specifically for, for crew and you just slid into my email. You were like, Hey, this is, I can UPM, I can produce. And I was like, I don't even have the budget for any of these things. And I was like, whatever, I'll talk to this girl. She, and then you call, we called. I think we had yeah. a chat and um, you were on your way to Palm Springs. I remember that. Or I was, I was like on, on my way, way to Palm Springs. Springs. <laughs> you were I, in Malibu. <laughs> no, I was fucking displaced. I remember because our, we were having a heat wave and uh, in the, so my husband and I live in the Bay area uh, primarily right now. And we were having a heat wave in San Jose mm-hmm. oh my and God. our AC broke and we have two 50 pound dogs. Um, and so we were just like, well, we can't be here and the dogs will overheat. Yeah. So we were actually staying like in his friend's townhouse for that weekend until we were able to like get the AC situation sorted. Oh my God. I was like in my husband's best friend's like master bedroom, like trying to have a <laughs> conversation with you and it was chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and my my boyfriend was driving and on that call too. And he was like, Oh, she sounds so great. I feel like that went really well. I'm like, I think that went really well too. <laughs> you were wonderful and made a very compelling case 
for, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I guess, like, probably this will be very additive. Um, and that was kind of as you were amazing. Which goes to show listeners, too. Like, I know we talk a lot about, like, you know, your personality is what gets you the job a lot of the time. But, like, so she wasn't even looking for Carolina's position, you know? And she got the job because mm. she hopped on a call and you guys just talked it out. So, like, right there is proof. Yeah, absolutely. Like for me, there were a couple people who did that. Mandy, who I think you guys have spoken mm -hmm. to, who's our costume designer. And again, like we did not have the budget for a costume designer, right? Like this is a 10 minute short that like some friends decided to get together and do. And I think, you know, it, we had started crowdfunding at this point, but we had no idea how much money we were going to get. And so it's like, what the fuck am I going to do with a costume designer? I have like, people are going to dress themselves and show up. And Mandy did the same thing. She just reached out to me and I was like, all right, I'll take the call. And I'm a very just gut reaction people. And with both Carolina and Mandy, I was like, these just seem like good people that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And that's like what was really cool about hearing Mandy's side of the story, guys. Check, like, listen to last, now it might be two seasons ago, Jesus. <laughs> but <laughs> like uh, her episode, because yeah, she found, from what I remember, the Indiegogo campaign and then like just reached out herself. And so for people who are like, how do I get started in this industry? It could be just simple as that. And yeah, maybe since you're starting out, you have to like put in your own like free labor. But now you she gets to say like she has content for herself that she's proud of. And like, obviously, we are, we're so proud of the short, which is now fully edited and complete. Mm -hmm. And we've we've sent it off to film festivals. I, I know we were like in that stage. Yeah, yeah, we are. We've submitted to a bunch and then we still have quite a few more because the deadlines roll through May and June. And so we're still submitting. Um, but yeah, we're in, in the process of that. Yeah. And which is so exciting. Um, I love it. I'm, I think it's just done so beautifully. And just to take it back a little bit with Indiegogo, yeah. can we just like let our listeners know about that experience? Um, Don't the pros it. and cons. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know any other way don't do it uh, that's my advice uh, <laughs> yeah sorry what was the question <laughs> no because there's so many different crowdfunding platforms and I've I've spoken to some other creators about like the pro like which ones they all do different mm -hmm. have different incentives or different things mm -hmm. and Indiegogo is one of the popular ones that I think a lot of indie filmmakers consider I think it is like really for indie mm -hmm. filmmakers right like that is kind of the portal for them um would you say so other than the you know the hardships of crowdfunding <laughs> and literally like getting everyone to be aware of your project which mm -hmm. I think Tess and I talk about it too when you have an audience you have people who genuinely want to support in any way they can that's a great way to just get them to help you out whether mm. if it's yeah I do think um having having done it and just like gone through the process and learned I think that certainly like if it's your first time doing something like this like crowdfunding is a great way to go to just you know have all the money in one place and have a place where like people who are, are who are donating can go to and see and it feels very like official and legit mm -hmm. the reality in our situation which i don't think is the case with all crowdfunding um because certainly there's just like you know bigger kickstarters and indiegogo things uh, depending on the product or the thing but like for us we were just trying to raise you know 20 grand so that we could pay everybody that was working on the movie uh, yeah except for me and greg um <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes <laughs> that's how but it goes I, yeah it was really really important to greg and i to be able to make sure that like all our cast and crew were paid uh just because you know i i personally like yeah like if you have to do it in a pinch like great like free labor and we're all working for free i think that there's a certain 
uh, kind of camaraderie that comes there. But because we were hiring so many people that we didn't know, you know, we had friends on set, but there were a lot of people that we were meeting for the first time. And I think to, I think it's really fucking important people get paid. Um, we agree. <laughs> you, know, you made that really, really clear to all of us when you were bringing us on as a team. And I really just loved that that made me feel really comfortable and valued. Mm-hmm. So I, I do want to state that that's what kind of set a different precedent than other people. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important. I think it is, even if like you cannot, and obviously again, like we had like a 16 person crew and, you know, uh, less than 20 grand at the end of it. But like, uh, just even if you cannot pay somebody like extraordinary amounts, like this is a fucking Marvel movie, just paying people and just treating them with that respect and like, you know, feeding them not shit, I think goes a long way in people <laughs> wanting to work with you. Uh, <laughs> um, sushi got Whole Foods craft services, which <laughs> I think is unheard of. When you said you caught back and I'm like seeing the Whole Foods blay out of, of items, I'm like, this girl is on this other level that I can only aspire to be at because that is like so nice. And I feel like uh, we'll talk into your background what led you to producing this because I know you are primarily primarily a writer and that is your house and your your world but like that I just felt you brought a different sense to the producing aspects that uh, we're probably more so accustomed to and it was just really nice well I mean it's things <laughs> like that that make a difference that make people want to work with you again you know like I mean even yeah. just if like food if we can talk about that again for a minute like having actually like healthy options and options in general for people that, you know, somebody's vegan, somebody's gluten-free, whatever, like, cause that you don't necessarily ask that about everybody beforehand. So to have options for them, like we were talking about, you know, catering for whenever we shoot um, our feature and it's like, well, you know, catering costs a lot of money. So maybe one day we will just have pizza, you know, but then one day we'll have like a nice catered meal. And then in between we'll do like catering quote unquote from, you know, a restaurant restaurant that's like chicken right. and salads Close. or whatever you know so yeah so you can you you have to be aware of how much you're spending of course we don't all have mm-hmm. tons of money to blow on great catering for film but mm-hmm. yeah it's it makes your crew made and past feel yeah. special and feel taken care of and feel respected yeah and I do think that it is I actually did um send out a word doc to everybody asking their dietary restrictions ahead of oh I I was there I did that (laughs) (laughs) yeah so because you know for me like that's always something I want to be mindful of um you know also just like growing up in an Indian house I'm very anxious about like feeding people and making sure nobody's hungry um because when people get hungry they get cranky um (laughs) So that was a big thing. And the Whole Foods was really like, we had a lot of vegans and we had a lot of kind of like dietary allergies. And I don't know what the fuck to feed vegans, but (laughs) Whole Foods generally does. And so I was like, I can go to Whole Foods and it will tell me what to buy. That was really cool. Um, Eat those right Whole Foods. And then, yeah, like it doesn't like, it doesn't take much time, right? Like I spent like a few days just researching kind of vegan friendly places that catered in LA at like the price point that was kind of, you know, 10 bucks a person mm-hmm. just so that like people, people could have like healthy, clean options because I do think it's sucky. Like if you're vegan or gluten-free and it's like, well, here's this like bag of leaves for lunch, right. enjoy, you so, know? Yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah. No, that's so true. That was a big thing was just like food and making sure that people were getting like fed appropriately and, and, and were happy with options. Uh, and, you know, obviously we budgeted out for, for a catering budget and we worked everything within that budget. Mm-hmm. Right. So it wasn't like I was doing anything crazy. Uh, but yeah, like feeding people is important. That was part of our budget process. And when we were raising right. with Indiegogo to like go back to that, that piece of it. But yeah, like I think when you are, when you are in the situation where you are crowdfunding and raising with, it ended up being most of our, you know, friends and family that donated. And I think if like right. that's the case and that's what ends up happening, um, which for smaller projects can often be the case, uh, you can do that without going through the crowdfunding process and without them taking out like three to 5% of what you raise. Um, and also without having to pay taxes on what you raise as if that was income that you made. Oh which, my God. Which is a I didn't, that's a I didn't know that. This year. Uh-huh, yeah. Cause, Stop. Yeah, they will tax you as if that is income. 
That's insane. <laughs> oh my god. Versus, versus like if you have just like your friends and family donating to you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like a gift. Uh, so that was a thing that I learned, um, which I think. People- no, I did not know that. Yeah, no. I don't. Because I knew about the three to five, which guys, that made a difference. That took thousands of dollars from what she raised. Mm-hmm. So then on top of that being taxed, like, geez. Yeah, which I just think it's like, you know, people should be mindful of going into it. And again, like you don't know until you do it the first time. Um, but right. now, like if I talk to anybody who wants to do crowdfunding, you know, that's like something that I can tell them like, okay, like you can do it. And like, it is a good way to do it, um, yeah. depending on, you know, sort of what you're after and what your circumstances are, but also <laughs> bear in mind, yeah, it's going to look like you made 18 grand when you, in fact, went into debt. <laughs> mm-hmm. That kind of makes me think though, like, you know, there's got to be a better way to do it. And it, it because it is nice to have like, here's the link to, you know, if you want to donate to, because other, otherwise I know we have a lot of like friends and family and people that we've met through this podcast and audience we've built that want to support us and have said like, when you get to that point, let us know, you know, but like you're saying, you know, you lose so much money going through that. So, you know, I, I almost wonder if it's better to just make your own, you know, video like you do for a crowdfunding campaign, have a link, have where people can go that it's like your own PayPal. <laughs> you know, instead of going yeah. through the whole actual like, crowdfunding yes. process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that there are sort of ways now to do that. Like, and I, I had a friend who raised money for her feature through, um, it's not a crowdfunding service. Crap, it starts with a P. Can't remember what it's called. Is it Patreon? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So we have a Patreon for, uh, well, for our whole production company in general, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's been super helpful too. And we were very surprised. I mean, it is mostly just friends and family. We've had our very first Patreon that we like, don't know personally, finally subscribe. We're like, Oh my gosh. Yay. But, like, but still <laughs> even that, like we were surprised the amount that people were willing to put in every month and you know, yeah. so yeah. And I think that's, yeah. that's certainly like a way that is m- more beneficial to, you know, you guys as creators to do it than I think something like crowdfunding is, which will always have its drawbacks. And it does like have its pros as well, right? Because when you're doing things like merch and giving, you know, um, perks away, it houses all that stuff in a really easy place so that you know where to send everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, there, are, there are different perks to it. And, you know, it's an easy link that people can share. Um, but then with the perks, that was another thing. It was like having to then take more out of the budget to make mugs or t-shirts or like all that extra stuff too, that you have to consider is going to take out of the money you raised, right? Yeah. Shipping's expensive. Mandy yelled at me for that. Um, <laughs> you know, very sweet Mandy way. She was like, why did you agree to ship everything yourself? And I was like, because people are donating. I'm not going to ask them like, but also 10 extra dollars, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that shit adds up it does it does damn yeah that's just the other things to consider with the crowdfunding so you it like could also just try to raise more right so that it can even out sometimes some of that damage or you know that just because you won't know and then you're like shoot maybe I should have raised more money yeah and then another thing I want to co- uh, cover because it was a low budget film we went with a SAG low budget agreement for this project yeah and that was that was a big learning lesson I think for oh, both yeah. of us <laughs> <laughs> and we don't yeah. go into that too much but yeah it was it was not fun <laughs> but yeah I do want to I want to get into it a little bit because I know like we've had on this show okay Tessa well, yeah no I do I, I think it's important because I know we've had on this show like people who are advocates for SAG and for making your project union. And there's plenty of reasons to do that, but like there's a lot of drawbacks to it too. And so it's good for our listeners to hear, you know, the the pros and cons of it all. I know that that's so true. And I will just say like, it's definitely, I feel like so great and important. Um, it's, it's, it's a great way to protect the actor. I don't think it helps us producers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I think it's great to secure the actor, but I just don't feel like with the producing, it's a, for low budget, especially, I think it's, it's a much difficult jungle to maneuver. Mm -hmm. And we're the ones that are providing the work. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just saying. Yeah. I think that it, 
I don't think that it makes it for something of this this size and scale. I don't think that it makes a tangible difference in terms of like it's not like you're like oh well this is SAG micro budget production and anybody <laughs> cares right like nobody cares. Um, right. But like what it does do is because we were in a little bit of a weird spot. We had a, a few SAG actors uh, on set and a few non SAG actors. I think like it was like half and half. Mm-hmm. And so oh, okay. for the actors that were SAG and obviously you know they're doing it for kind of like SAG minimums. Um, one, it did, ha- you know, it does like help them like have protection because they're part of a union. Right. Um, and also for, for payroll purposes, when we we're paying out, we, we could, we just sort of like set up, them up with a payroll company mm-hmm. and they filled out all their tax forms and stuff and they could send it directly to the, the payroll company and the payroll company mailed their checks versus what I did with the rest of the ca- the crew, which is just like had everybody invoice me and I would pay them directly for the SAG actors. I think that makes like things like taxes and stuff easier in terms of how mm-hmm. they're doing it. So I'm glad we did it for that reason. And I think it was like worth the headache for our actors peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, like from a production standpoint, I don't think it makes a tangible difference if you do something as like a SAG micro budget production or not. Yeah. Just being like to like to say that, and you don't have like a you know a SAG actor or a star that you want to attach. I feel like it's yeah. just a lot of paperwork that isn't going to really do much. <laughs> a lot of paperwork. In yeah. Some of I don't want to make generalized statements because I won't speak to a whole union that I'm largely unfamiliar with. I'm not an actor, but some of the reps don't like responding to emails. <laughs> And then you have to play this big game of just like, you know, just like trying to track down somebody who will talk to you and get talk to you. Enough that you need, which Carolina had to do a lot of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, sushi, I got this call. I'll take care of it. And like, I would just spend days like trying to track someone down only to get wrong information <laughs> time and time and again. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I have that attitude. I don't think I do. I think I'm very nice. Yeah. <laughs> And so I'm like, no, I'm just like, hi, I know we're nobody. Sure, sure, sure. But can I just get the same? Can I just like, I just need to process this paperwork. Otherwise, we can't get the permit to make to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Like you are stopping our production (laughs) from happening because then, yeah, we also like legitimately went through getting um, permits done, which was another headache that we (laughs) necessarily need to get into. But that was um that was also Burbank is I I would say shoot in LA if you can because Burbank has its own set of rules I will say that and officially we encourage everybody to have permits yes 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 get caught and unofficially we'll talk about over drinks yeah (laughs) wasn't the one about something like if you're even parking like nothing to do with using the car. Yeah, or, yeah, it was. We had to get like part of the permit was just like around the street parking. I was like, but we're not even. We're not shooting anything outside. Yeah. We had gone through a studio in Burbank, and you know had paid the studio rental, and they were like, this is just like city of Burbank rules, and which fine, whatever. But I, it was just a lot of. I don't want to get into a rant about like the government. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, right. But like then it added on these extra like insurance exactly. costs and auto insurance that Yeah, which we were not driving. Yeah. Exactly. We're we're in a studio. Yeah. And so shit adds up so quickly. Right. And especially when you're working with such a small budget, it's like very frustrating to be like, okay, and then they're gonna take like seven hundred dollars out for a permit, half of which is for like usage of the street, which you're not using. So yeah. it is just like a racket to like collect tax money. Um, but I'm going to yeah. pull Ron Swanson. So <laughs> <laughs> my favorite character, but yeah, it's just, like it's also like, <laughs> it's, it's wild to me because I have shot in that same studio multiple mm-hmm. times and never had to do that. So I don't know if it's a new rule or it's just a rule that I wasn't made aware of. The studio doesn't have the rule. They're chill. They're right. they're wonderful, and they are just like, if the fire marshal comes, which happens like once a year, but we don't know when, yeah. and asks for a permit, then like you know you're screwed. But like I never was even aware of this. Like oh really? Yeah. So I mean, it's not like we purposely were like, well, let's just try to get away with it. Like yeah. I was never made aware of this until Carolina told me. That's why I was like, wait, is this a new rule or is this just something that? The city of Burt, like, how would you know, I guess, unless somebody tells you, you know? So 
which is like maybe they've had it happen recently i don't know but that's why we were like well we've already committed so far Mm -hmm. into making you know doing it sag and doing that that i just think to lessen our anxiety of getting shut down yeah (laughs) like we were like all right it's worth it to just do it but we probably would have been fine (laughs) i think at that point we had also like already kind of like asked somebody initially about the permit so then I was super anxious I was like no the permit people know right (laughs) right now we have to get the fucking permit because you're gonna be like this bitch never got it (laughs) (laughs) they're driving around looking for your car the day the shoot (laughs) like ah no let's just let's just do it (laughs) just do it yeah exactly Well, another thing I want to point out, because this was a short film, and, like, correct me if I'm wrong, this was the first one that you've, like, filmed, that you've written and produced sushi? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I primarily write features, um, so I had I had written this short, uh, which started out as a play a million years ago, and then uh, my friend Anna, who is in the movie... We love her. Uh, we love her. She's amazing. She, she called is. me December of 2020 and was like, hey, do you remember like you wrote that short a couple years ago? Can I use it to film for my reel? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I kind of sat with it for a few days and called her back. And I was like, well, if we're going to do it, like, why don't we just like do it all the way, you know, and like do it right which is probably just like my control freak issues where it's like unwilling to like let go of my writing. I think um, a lot of creatives feel that way though too. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I don't like think literally everyone we've had on this rare. podcast yeah. has said that. <laughs> I'm sure it would have been fine. But I was like, let's just let's just do this all together. Um and then I called Greg and asked him if he wanted to direct and uh, I called my friend Melissa, who's the EP on this, and you know, asked if she wanted to come on produce. She was initially attached as a producer, and then she ended up taking um, a director of development job, and so she didn't have the time, but she stayed on as an EP, um, which was incredible because this was, you know, I worked in producing in my twenties, uh, on and off for years, but it was like commercial production or just like weird, mm-hmm. like outdoor adventure television production which is very different right the narrative um so it was the first thing that I'd done narratively and Melissa was so hugely helpful in terms of just like giving advice or if I just had a question and didn't know how something worked because like she had you know she's produced shorts and she's produced reality tv and she's done this for for so many years and is it is very much like her job Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so she was an invaluable resource when I felt like I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So <laughs> I'm going to ask Melissa and she'll tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so helpful to have, like, just to ask those quick questions that you can't even Google. We're, we're currently stuck on something, too. And we're like, all right, we're going to to do some digging, asking around, yeah. because something, some questions in the producing world aren't just like, there for you to to find so that's super helpful yeah and I think that that is the thing right and this is always something that I stress to people where it's like I feel like most people in this industry whether it's your reps or producers or execs or whoever the fuck like the 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 good ones which most of them are there's like yeah there's like yeah of like shitty people but that's true of anywhere right right <laughs> if you don't know something like ask and just ask for help and don't have you know pride or ego or whatever else about it because like somebody will be willing to help you or answer the questions for you Mm -hmm. and and that's the only way that you do learn and can kind of make things that feel you know full and polished and professional versus just like being stubborn and just being like no I'm just gonna figure it out and I'll just do it myself um and then you end up with like a shit show production or like a nightmare set environment and that's just not worth it no so true I think some people are, they, they just get scared to ask. Mm-hmm. And I understand that, but I think you'll find that most of the time people are going to be receptive mm-hmm. and, and want to like give you their, their advice or help. Like uh, we we have that energy, like yeah. ask us anything. We're, we're yeah. here to like give it all. Especially and, like, too, yeah. if you know specifically what 
you need to know or what you want to ask, you know, because yeah. you don't just want to waste somebody's time going into like, hey, can I pick your brain? But really, you're just generally like, how do I make a film? Like, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to waste somebody's time. And I know for us, like, you know, we've got questions from people that were like, OK, this is the quick answer. But like, actually, you can listen to our podcast episode that talks about this. And that's not us just being like, listen to our podcast. You know, it's like right. we actually have the answer because we asked and we found this out. So we want to share that with you. But also we're busy people. We don't, I can't sit down for an hour with you right now. It's already, there's yeah. the info, you know, so just be respectful of people's time, of course, when you're totally. asking questions, but it just, it helps to be really specific too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when you do have like something like this, where you guys have the answer somewhere because you've done so many episodes and you know, you don't want to rehash information. And I don't generally advise doing it with strangers. Like it's one thing to do with your friends, like your friends, you can bug a little right. bit. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Right, 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 right. And that, and that's a that's also like key. Like, no, just be smart. Like, feel it out. No, know, know who you can really just like. Yeah. Yeah, contact. <laughs> <laughs> um, but something I wanted, the reason why I asked like, oh, is this your your first like narrative produced mm -hmm. uh, film mm -hmm. was because I love when we were talking after like you've done gone through post and stuff like what your goal was for the next one and like where why you really went all out with this project was so you can get funding for the next mm -hmm. one yeah and not have to go through crowdfunding and I thought that was like really smart this is why like that was a great project to start and do the crowdfunding because now you, this is, we, we were just talking on our other episode about a calling card yeah. and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way to, to put a stable of like, this is something I've written. It's beautifully produced. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> everyone involved was just so talented. And, and then like, and now you can work towards the next one. Um, so I just, I wanted to like, just yeah rehash that a little bit totally um my personal philosophy on this just like working yeah. in the industry as as a writer right like that's my my primary um role right now mm -hmm. in the industry and I think that you know people all, always say and it's a very frustrating thing I think to hear on the other end of it where it's just like well like if you want to like get anywhere just like make your own shit and like, that's true and not true, right? Like, yes, like if you want, if you are writing something or you wanna direct something or you wanna be in something and you have a certain very specific idea about like what that looks like that you don't want outside influence from. And by outside influence, I don't mean like notes, everybody should get notes, but in terms right. of like have it, you know, be something that you don't recognize at the end of it like then yeah like you do have to figure out ways to make those things and that's fucking hard because unless you're independently wealthy that's always going to require raising money um yeah but you know in 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 the industry and especially i think as a writer who works through the studio system you know and i love the people i work with and they're awesome and it's it's been a great experience but it's also like you are beholden to you know, not just like your script, it's like you're beholden to producers and a director and a studio and reps. And like, it goes through all these phases and changes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're lucky and you're working with great people, then your script at the end of it is like, is something that is totally different, but is still something that you're excited about and proud of, which has been the case with a project of mine that's in development right now. And like, the script looks nothing like it did when I first, you know, thought it was done. Uh, but I, <laughs> I still like, I love it. And it still feels like, it feels like the story I wanted to tell, right? But it's obviously right. through many, many- The essence back. is there, the messaging is there, but it Absolutely. just looks- looks a little different yeah, yeah. that's not always the case right like I, right. I'm lucky to be like working with like really really great people on this project I think sometimes you end up with something that is like so unrecognizable from the thing you wanted to write and I think that can be really demoralizing for writers um and I think it is just that like realizing that like okay but like that's the way that like that piece of it works and right if you are constantly sitting there waiting for like that shit to pay off because the other thing is it takes everything takes for fucking ever especially right now because <laughs> yeah. everything's backlogged because of covid um mm -hmm. you know then you're gonna drive yourself crazy and i have driven myself crazy because i'm very impatient i'm very much like somebody who's just like let's fucking go and like let's do shit 
um, which is not how development works. <laughs> <laughs> um, why, Tessa, doesn't this sound very familiar? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, we really want to go, but it's like a whole fucking... Yeah, mm-hmm. you got to just jump through a lot of hoops to get that end result. And even doing our project independently for a feature, it's just like you still, though, need like stamps of approvals and like yeah. going through the notes and the feedback and constantly just so that way you can be taken seriously. Yeah. And that's like exactly. why you want to go through this hell of a process. So that way you can be proud and be like, all right, this we did it, even if it was on our own terms. Yeah. But and you want other people to see that you're somebody that can be like collaborative because yeah. at the end of the day, like if you don't have a collaborative working environment, whatever you're trying to do, the end product is always going to be shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I genuinely believe that. Um, but yeah, like, so I decided to do this because I was waiting on like some writing projects, you know, and I was just like, they're like in development and that takes the time that it takes. And so it was like, well, this is a thing that like is just mine. And like, I'm not doing it to make money and I'm not doing it to, you know, like, Get, gain anything other than like I want to make a movie that I feel proud of mm-hmm. and this is the scale at which like we can do that right now um and to also like have like more opportunities for yeah. things down the line like you know Carolina you and I have talked about of like I'm gonna direct a short at the end of this year by the end of this year which I'm like super stoked about but just thinking yeah. of like whatever your long-term goals in the industry are I think is really really beneficial to helping figure out the stuff that you want to make independently or you want to make for yourself like what does that look like and like for me it's like yeah I want to write and I also want to produce and I also want to direct and I think that's probably true for you guys as well you know and so you have to figure out like okay what are what are the tangible things that like I can do to get to the that that That, place yeah because yeah so much that you cannot control that's out of your control so if you sit and you wait for like all the shit that's out of your control to be like go your way you'll lose your mind and I have Um. (laughs) (laughs) no thank you for being so like I mean I know you're you're always honest and open that's something I I just your your wonderful attributes to you and I, I like just love that so much but like for our listeners it's just the the waiting game sucks and and like just being able to I think stay, keep the endurance up. It's just like, keep on working on different projects that you feel like excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love that you said like really leaning into uh, what you want to do and knowing like where you want to go in my career. I'm like mentally like reshifting my thoughts on like how to go about that. Even though like I know, like I can tell you like, this is what I want to do, but then when I talk to other people in the industry, like, okay, they like are execs, right? Or something mm-hmm. like executive producers. And they're like, well, do you want to produce for like this big company, this big production house? Or do you want to do your like own projects? Cause it sounds like you want to write and yeah. you want to direct and act. So what is that? And I'm, it sounds like you want to do that. So you should be leaning into that at all mm-hmm. costs and not like, you know, focusing on trying to get in the doors of these other places. And I I just felt like I, this pressure to like figure it all out and not lean into doing things independently when like, no, don't fight that. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense guys? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, And it's stressful because you're like, oh shit. Like, am I, it's hard to do the five year fucking plan with what we do, but yeah. I think yeah. it, it, it is really hard to do that because it's like, again, like even like the things that are out of your control, like the industry, like it always like changes so much and what people are after it changes like minute to minute. And then you never know when, you know, a global pandemic's going to hit. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's, yeah, you, can't, you can't have a five-year plan um, it, as I think anybody working in this industry. And, and I do think that like your priorities too, like just depending on what is what is going on in your world and your life and what you're after and what you're learning and what you're doing, I think those things like shift and change. Like I never thought that I would want to direct. Like a few years ago, I had a script that uh, won like third place in Slam Dance, and they did like a little like whatever 
at the, the awards, whatever thing mm-hmm. that it was, <laughs> and they're talking to all the writers and they're asking like all these writers. And I still remember because my fucking husband's like standing in the door really. Like, hmm. <laughs> 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 they're like asking all these writers like, oh, like, so what do you want to do with this script? Like you wouldn't want, yeah. and everybody's like, I want to like figure out a way to direct it myself and make it. And, you know, it was like, great like lovely like everybody has like these very like specific things they want to do and then they ask me they're like oh yeah I'm like what about you like do you want to direct or like produce this movie and I was like fuck no I just want to be left to left to write I don't want to do anything else um and I just out of the corner of my eye saw my husband in the window like no (laughs) we have that on camera now I love it. But you know, it's like I'm I'm constantly amazed by people that just make film after film after film and they just go, 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 and there's like three out in one year or whatever. But like yeah. a lot of it has to do with A, like the resources they have, even you know, just mm-hmm. money wise. If you've got all the money, like that's what ho- holds most people up the longest, you know. But also like, yeah, knowing what they want and like some of those people, it's like all they're doing is directing. And I don't mean to sound like directing isn't a lot of work or isn't important, but like, you know, that's there. They don't have to worry about the production. They don't have to worry about the writing. They don't have to worry about whatever else. And it seems like, you know, they're making all this stuff and they are, but they only have one thing to worry about versus, you know, us that are like, we are producing, we're directing, we're writing, we're starring and doing all that stuff. Like, of course it's going to take longer. It's going to take more work. And We've all got lives and day jobs and, you know, all of that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's it's a lot. And I think, like, especially the more hats you wear, mm-hmm. it can become really just exhausting at certain points because you are trying to do so many things at once and, like, be, you know, and it's like, we're not meant to, I think, be having to, like, do all of these, because all these jobs independently are very challenging jobs, right. much less trying to, like, do five at once. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. But then it goes back what? to, you know, like, what, if you want to make your own content, your own projects, right. do right. you want to have full control of them? Then you've got to, you know, wear all of yeah, these hats. Gotta and, do yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. Gotta do it. No, that's what I'm excited about because I'm like, well, I, th- you got to remind yourself you are excited about the work, even if it is work. Mm-hmm. Like, you're like, but I get to, at the end of the day, make a movie, mm-hmm. like a film that yeah. is my voice and my story. And like, you can get bogged down by the paperwork, right? And all of that. But it's just like, it's just like any job. There's the mundane parts of it that you just need to like, like work out through. And I've just like learned to just like, just deal with it and breathe. <laughs> Lots of breathing <laughs> and coffee. <laughs> Take breaks. And, you know, to a certain degree, I think, like, we're, I think we're all a little bit just, like, I don't know, masochistic or, like, addicts because, like, that feeling of being on set is the best feeling, I like, on the planet, I genuinely believe. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, that is always the thing that we're yeah. all kind of working towards. And it's so, due. yeah, it's, like, it's a lot yeah. of work and it's exhausting and you're tired all of the time and you get burned out very frequently. And at the same time, <laughs> I, I really feel like if you – if we could do anything else, we would do that thing. Like, yeah. that's always, like, the only advice uh, I feel like I can ever, like, give to I love that. other writers is just, like, is there anything else you like? <laughs> like, then do that thing. Yeah. Because, like, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is only if you are just so fucking insane yeah. that like you're like no I have to do this thing there's nothing else yeah and I mean you know there are some people that take it on as a hobby that, that it's like you know they're making a super low budget like web series or whatever and that's great and if you can do that for fun like good for you because I know that I can't <laughs> like I can't just do it for fun I, I have to go fucking full throttle you know yeah guys the full throttle that is our that is our like setting yeah <laughs> But that's why we work so well. That's why we work so well. Like, I don't want to work with anyone who doesn't want to go full throttle on something. Mm -hmm. Totally. Same. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Then, like, go do the fun web series. (laughs) You know? Like, that's fine. What's that like? Yeah. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Exactly. No, exactly. Um, I wanted to pivot because I do want to talk about your writing uh, career because that is really hard, like you're saying, (laughs) and, um, you are repped. 
mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. And like what for any of our listeners who are interested in just being like writers or just getting repped, like any you um I would love to hear about your your journey to that point and like any tips you could give. Uh sure. Yeah. I so this is I always feel like this question is hard because I feel like it's so it's so subjective and I do feel like everybody's experience on this is different. Um, but for me, Makes you sense. know, I, I, I went to school for writing. I've literally never just wanted to do anything else. And so I've sort of spent my twenties working every odd job that I could, like I've waitressed, I've bartended. Um, I have like taken like rich children from the Upper East Side ice skating. Um, <laughs> that I can't ice skate. So that was a weird time, you know, and I had like producing day jobs because I really was, I think in my twenties, constantly trying to do the thing of like, okay, like writing is not a practical life path. Let me be writing adjacent and that will be good enough because then I'll still be, you know, in the industry, Mm -hmm. but I won't be kind of like relying on, on writing to kind of get me through. And so like I produced commercials, like I said, I produced outdoor adventure television. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been a PA on things and every time I would hit a point where I'd just be like, no, but I don't want to do this, Mm -hmm. you know? And then I'd go back to like waitressing, bartending, writing. Uh, So in terms of like that, like I really tried to quit writing a lot of times and just could not. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love that. I I don't love that you went through that. No, but just hearing that, um, I was listening to an A24 podcast episode, I think their last drop, and I'm sorry, I forget names, but that's like what this writer, she said the same thing. She's like, it took me trying to quit writing that made me realize like, I can't yeah. quit it. Yeah. Like it hit, like that's sometimes that's the process that we have mm-hmm. to go through to test ourselves. And, and I mean, when you're in your twenties, you're figuring this shit out. Mm-hmm. Like you're figuring out life and who you are anyways. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a whole complicated thing. Tessa, I'm seriously digging Jambox. The fam needs to hear about their extensive music and sound effect library. I agree. Not only do they have a huge library created by Hollywood level composers, but you can search through it all based on criteria like genre and mood. Plus, they even have detailed stems you can use to create your own soundtracks from the elements they provide. You can literally be your own composer. 6,000 unique tracks and tens of thousands of stems, plus over 10,000 sound effects. Carolina, that's amazing. Oh, it gets better. They even gave us a discount code for our listeners. 10% off with Fem10. Connecting filmmakers with ridiculously good music and sound effects. Go and visit jambox.io and start leveling up your sound production. Exactly. Again, that's code FEM, F-E-M-M-E, 10 at jambox.io. Yeah, and that's that's exactly it, right? Like, I just feel like so many people, I, there's a few that I know that are, I don't understand how they're, like, so put together in their 20s, but <laughs> I know a few of those people, and I'm impressed by them. Uh, I was not one of those people. Like, I was a total shit show. Um, so, like, for me, like, there were, like, I spent, like, I think, like, two or three years not writing at all um and just like oh working you know like production job um dating like some asshole guy because we all do that yep. um yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes resounding yes yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not ever spending any time with writing um and then kind of when I moved to LA in 2015 um I picked it back up again and again like was just like writing for me and I had briefly an agent then and he was awful. So it was like such an awful experience because so a lot of my friends in the industry are execs and are producers. And like that, those are like my, my close knit group of friends, like are on that side of things. Um, And this guy that I'm not going to like name names, obviously, but um, he signed on. You can, but that's fine. (laughs) Do what you're comfortable with. (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 no. Never our podcast. We're here for it. <laughs> uh, he signed on to me, my agent, and then all he wanted to do was like come to parties with me where, you know, wherever my friends were going. And he didn't seem to be sending my script out anywhere. 
he was oh, doing no. a lot of drugs also in and in, in like in a debilitating way um and so yeah. it became this thing where i was actually introduced to him by um by uh, an exec at a studio who i'm friends with and then she actually reached out to me and was like hey what's the deal with this guy and i was like what do you mean she's like is he doing anything for you and i was like Mm. <laughs> and you're probably like, doing okay, more I, for him but yeah I know she's like I just heard from another writer who's really upset and like he's not sending any of his shit out and just seems like he's like you know using this guy for whatever his contacts are and I was like yeah I kind of having the same experience and she's like what the fuck are you doing just fucking fire him <laughs> and you know it didn't occur to me yeah um because I didn't know anything you know and I was just like I guess this is just the way it goes um and I also oh you know don't I don't like being difficult or at least at that age um was like I don't want to be difficult um and so I did fire him and then I just spent a few years just writing and writing and you know making sure I had a lot of feature samples that were in good spots um and then my rep came to me very accidentally through this process um somebody, an exec who I don't know, um, or didn't know, and she found my script on, I think, Coverfly, mm -hmm. and uh, she, oh, wow. yeah, she really liked it, and she asked to have a general with me, and so we had a general meeting, and she was like, at this point, I was taking meetings with managers, because I had gotten sort of, like, enough traction on As You Wish, which is the script that um, is, is in active development right now. Mm -hmm. Um, that people were emailing me and asking to meet. And so like I had, um, I had been meeting with like several managers. And so she, on our chat asked like, oh, like, are you, do you have manager? And I was like, well, I'm meeting with managers right now. And she was like, okay. She's like, I have a friend and she's a manager and she's great. And um, she's at MXN, you know, can I, can I introduce you to her? And I was like, sure. And my manager, Tracy, um, who is over at Grandview and is the best, uh, she, uh, she and I had a general and she was the, I think the last manager that I met with. Um, and yeah, like, I was just like, okay, it seems very clear that like, she is, she was the first manager I also met with, by the way, because I primarily write features. Right. And every right. manager I met was like, well, you have to write TV. You have to write TV. You have to write TV, which is the thing I can get told to writers a lot. Mm -hmm. And I love TV. Um, but for me, like I'm a completionist. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm like, I don't, I'm not particularly interested in like staffing on the show that like I don't know when it ends like it gives like that's my own personal shit and like my own personal yeah. anxiety but I'm like limited series yay like three four seasons yay like I can wrap my brain around how that works right but the way that my brain works I do think you know like I'm better suited to write features um and I will be a worse writer in writers <laughs> Um, I don't know, you know, whatever, like, I don't no, know. I get it. I, I totally get it. it. Like, but yeah, like Tracy was the first person that I met with who was like, well, like if you feel strongly that you want to be in the feature space, then like be in the feature space. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was, you know, like, like, that was like, like that must've been so refreshing yeah. to hear. Yeah. Dude, you guys, like there was like one manager. <laughs> he was just like, yeah. Like, so like, we should put you on like succession. I was like, I fucking love succession. I cannot write that show. Like I am not that smart. And he was like, no, no, no. We like that's Only my show. favorite show that I talk about all the time on the show is succession. Like one season, I would just not shut up about that. Yeah, it's amazing. And I love it. And also I like, I know my limitations as a writer, guys. I'm like, I cannot, I will drown. <laughs> Um, not to oh interrupt you too, but just a really quick tangent is I didn't know that it it was that way for writers because I feel like it's that way for actors. It's like we get judged by what level we are at TV. Like, are we a guest star? Are we, you know, recurring, oh whatever. And it's like, like personally, I, I don't really want to do TV. Of course I would accept the job. But like, that's not what I'm pursuing. Like, I love film as an actor. And, you know, it's just so frustrating to to be asked that question. Like, oh, well, are you guest star status? And it's like, well, no, but I'm also not actively pursuing that, you know? And I had a teacher one time ask me like, well, because I said that was one of my goals was like to get more TV auditions that year or whatever. And she's like, well, if you don't want to do TV, why is that your goal? But if that's not what you want to do, don't waste your time on that, you know? So it's just interesting yeah. for me to hear that it's the same for writers. Yeah, no, it is. And like, people don't tell you that enough. And like, I really firmly believe that if you're pushed to do work that like you're not excited about mm -hmm. or, or, you know, like feel strongly about like your work will be worse right like you're not gonna do a good job you're not gonna attract that stuff exactly either. and then like and then that like affects other people mm -hmm. 
Um, so like my manager has really, really helped me like play to my strengths um, and like things that like I'm excited about. And I don't ever feel scared about like if she'll send me a thing and I'm just like, ah, like I'm not into it. Like I don't feel scared about saying no. And I think that's the biggest thing I would say about like getting a rep. I d can't advise on how to get a rep because again, like, like I'm saying, like my way into it was very accidental. Mm -hmm. And then I got my agent at CAA through Tracy, but I feel like who your rep is, is more important than like how you get your rep. Yeah. Like, it's not about just like get any rep, get any rep. Yeah. Like I think the person who your rep is like, find the rep that is like right for you because there are a lot of great reps as again, like, there's, like I said, like there's a lot of great execs. There's a lot of great right. producers, but you know, you want to work with somebody who understands your work and can promote your work and is like, and communicates with you in the way that you need to be communicated with and who you can communicate with, mm -hmm. you know, mutually in that way. Like you can have a great rep and if they're not the right fit for you, um, or they're like putting you in into or pushing you for things that like you don't want to do and you are not excited about, like that's going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll blow up their career. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cause that's not, then you're not actually getting what you signed up for quote unquote, yeah. like that you're not, you're not, it's not fulfilling and it's not mm -hmm. bringing you to where you, your goals. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really important to think about when you're looking at reps. And um, did you also feel when you met with Tracy too, that you've done the work and it was also great timing or was it kind of, it sounded like you, I'm saying this because maybe some people are considering reps or not sure when to consider reps. So like, did you feel like it was the right time in your career to consider representation? It kind of sounded like it happened organically though, too, with like yeah. your whole process. That's what I, yeah, yeah picked it, got, up on. it got to the point where like I was getting more emails and like requests and like questions than I could like handle independently. So it felt like an organic time. And it was also like coming off like the slam dance thing and, you know, like, yeah so like that that helped and then also just you know a few of my friends who had read um as you wish and like were like this is the script you know like this is it mm -hmm. and so like we're like trying to like introduce me to people so it, it happened like organically um I also like recognized that like you know like I came into it in a little bit of a privileged position of like even though like I what was unwrapped I had also by this point which was 20. 20 yeah 2020 like yeah I got my rep in the middle of the pandemic so that was like a weird time uh, and, <laughs> you know I also like I was in a position of privilege and that like I have friends in the industry who are producers and execs that I could like reach out to be like hey I'm like getting a lot of like requests on the script and like do you know anybody who is looking for new clients and like that's the thing that like I could do because like I had these friends for years you know and there's some like close right. friends and, you know, we all came up together in LA when we first moved there. Like I knew all these, uh, most of the girls, like I knew all these girls from the time we were all like assistants at places mm -hmm. or like, you know, doing like multiple jobs, babysitting or bartending. So, which is not everybody has that access. And I, and I think that that is also like important to remember that like, yeah, I could afford to do it in a really organic way. Not everybody can. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. No, that, that's really great to, to point out. Um, and why, like what I've learned too, from asking around, it's like, that is a benefit because we didn't go to film school. Um, and so it's like that, that network that can sometimes provide you some like, yeah, accessibility. Cause if they happen to come up with you, that's like a beautiful community that you can tap into. Um, and that's why taking on PA work and yeah, you doing can, whatever you can, can like, oh, yeah. you can still build it. Yeah. 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 And it, there's, there's different ways. It takes like, it takes, you know, the time that it takes and it takes forever, but like to, for just perspective, like I'm almost 36 and I've been doing this since I was 18. So it's really, it is such a <laughs> long game to a certain degree, yeah. but yeah, like I think yeah. that a lot of time reps will find you when like, when you have that project that is sort of like gets a lot of attention or enough people like reps will come find you and you don't have to do it the other way around I know people who've had mixed luck with querying um I never had great luck with querying but oh, I don't want sorry what is that querying so um, yeah. basically I I know writers who will like 
blind query or get have you know some sort of mutual connection and reach out to reps to see if they'll read their stuff okay. um, I don't particularly feel like that is particularly productive but mm -hmm. I also you know I don't want to be prescriptive like if that works for somebody and I'm sure it does like I think everybody's path is different and I just do think it is like so specific to like your individual circumstances that there are no like two stories right, that feel are the same yeah. in that way, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. No, but I think for the majority, what I've like heard from people like the has been, our writers and been wrapped and stuff, it kind of does sound like that's the, the general consensus of timing and things like you do work that you put your work out there in the right spots. Like people will come to you versus you having to like send out so many cold emails that like, no one's reading at the end yeah. of the day and but it can happen that doesn't mean it won't but it's just like I think a, well a harder thing I think it's, it comes down to being prepared to regardless of what method you take yeah. you know even if you are just literally yeah. cold emailing with no connection or anything like if you've got the material to back it up you know you've got some great scripts uh you've got you know this list of connections that you have or whatever that you can present to said rep like mm -hmm you're more likely to get wrapped and you know, whether it's, well, even if it's them reaching out to you, if, if they're like, Hmm, you know, this one thing I found of yours is interesting. What else you got? If you've got exactly. six other scripts ready to go, like, you know, you're yeah. way more likely for them to rep you. So. Yeah. I think the more scripts for sure, like the more scripts you have that are in good shape, the m much easier time you will have getting a rep because I think a lot of times what happens is like people like have like one great script and they've like written that one great script and then that's the only script they have and reps want to see that like you can do it again and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually, we can talk about this off air too, but I, I do want to selfishly ask you, have you gone through the blacklist option, like option of putting up your script and getting it, um, getting coverage, coverage for it? Um, yeah, I've done it. I, I, Again, I think I don't super recommend it to people. I think it is very much a pay to play. Mm. And, you know, I think sometimes that you get like insightful comments and sometimes I don't know, like, I don't know if they pay their readers enough. I don't know who the readers are. You know, apparently they're like people who are on desks, but I don't know. And I've not always gotten the vibe that that was the case based on the comments. Mm -hmm. And I also like, I feel like, writing is so subjective that I would much rather ask, you know, my friends who are also writers um, for notes who will give me like really brutally honest notes than go fucking pay some random person a hundred dollars for, cause it's a hundred dollars yeah. for a script evaluation. And like, you know, you don't know, like it's, if it's going to come back, your way and I think that's just like a lot of like flushing your money down the toilet which I don't advise to people and I've done it like I've done it um several times but you know what like fuck like I think that like they have given scripts of mine like sixes before that uh are in <laughs> development now yeah um, and yeah. also given scripts of mine like eights and nines that like nobody wants anything to do it mm -hmm. so you know you know what I mean like I feel like on that front Find your community. It's going to be a lot more helpful to you. Anybody that's going to charge you a fucking hundred dollars to give you two paragraphs of feedback is stealing your money. I mean, we were literally just talking about this before we got on with you. Like, is it worth, because we're applying to fiscal sponsorships and, you know, to have a good number on coverage from, you know, that's another, it's like another material that boosts us. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. yeah, if we don't get a good number, then it's like, well, fuck, do we have to, do, do we take the notes and rewrite and submit again? And like, is that worth it? Yeah. Cause that's more time then that's pushing it back and back and yeah. Cause we were, we had um, someone else in the show and that's, I think there is, I will say credibility to some sort that they have. That's why they're, they get scripts mm -hmm. option from their services. And, you know, the feedback is validating, I think to some degree. Um, but we were contemplating for our, our venture is that like the process, the stamp of approval we need when applying to fiscal sponsors or trying to get some other named talent attached. Like, I think it could hurt help you but is that like what we should be is it worth focusing it? on with our money um, <laughs> like is it monetarily yeah. is it worth it with our time and money I will tell you even when I've gotten eights and nines on scripts in the past that I had like pre pre having reps and stuff 
it did not make any significant difference to to like my okay. career or like access or opportunities very good so, to know yeah. I think no it's so yeah, good it's to like, know because we were literally debating this before you came on and I was like I made a note I'm like I'm gonna just flat out ask you <laughs> for your two cents and I know you're you're we're so grateful to have you taking a look too at our script. yeah no of course and and you will get better notes that way because people will understand or at least like people you know what, oh my god what I've, I've already got it trying to tell yes. versus shaping it into like whatever story somebody else thinks it should be and that's, mm-hmm. that's the important thing and the other thing it's like this is not like to i'm not trying to like shit on uh the blacklist even though I think I have a little. Um, <laughs> <oops. That's all laughs> um, I think it is, you know, I don't think that it is like without value, but I do think it was very different than like my first script that I uploaded on there, which was, I don't know, would have been like um, 2013, mm-hmm. 2012 maybe. And it did, but it was so much smaller then, right? Like the whole operation was so much smaller then. Um, I, I did get, you know, um, a few meetings off that uh and a few like relationships I I was able to like build off that like somebody from um like Screen Gems had found my first script that I ever posted which is so bad (laughs) Uh, but like and she really liked it um and you know I was able to like get meet with her and like she was somebody that I think was really really helpful for me in a lot of like career things early on so I don't think that it's like without merit but I think the way that it has like grown so much and the ways in which like they are so I think over extended mm-hmm. in terms of people submitting versus the amount of readers that they have that it is it is it is morphed into something else that I don't necessarily feel like unless you get chosen for one of like their fellowships or opportunities um is super helpful and also the official blacklist that comes out every year is not the same thing as which i don't think a lot of people know is not the same oh. thing as like you can't like get on the official blacklist by hosting your script on there oh i didn't the know that right yeah i didn't know that official but, blacklist yeah. is like sent out by like reps when they go out with a script um basically it's like insider like industry people read all these scripts over the year and then the end it's you know uh, basically like, they get to make a list of what were their favorite scripts of the year interesting ah. that's how that works so you can host your script on blacklist and it will not get on the blacklist that way good to know <laughs> no that's a it's yeah, a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they do say that directly on their website but i think it's somewhere in little print that nobody reads <laughs> of course of course yeah <laughs> yeah no, I'm so glad we we got to like pick your brain on that yeah. because you know it's all these decisions that you have to make and you want to make sure since again you're uh, investing so much time and money that you're doing everything to look your best when you are pitching yourself and that you have we we're we're not named talent Emmy award winning whatever <laughs> like we don't have we don't have these accolades so it's like what can we present to show that we are serious and we're talented and have all the goods in the bag so it's just like one of those things yeah that are yeah. Hard. yeah I feel like yeah grant grants and fellowships and and that kind of thing are are way better uh ways to go and also like you know you guys do have a short which is really really helpful and like I think like the more shorts you have under your belt like you can show like well look like we're doing all these things mm-hmm. that it's a weird like double-edged sword but like people like when they see like oh you've already done it I believe you can do it (laughs) yeah (laughs) so true so true babe and on that note too I want to make sure our listeners can follow you and see your work and all that kind of stuff so anything you want to share like website social media any of that Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, people can do that. I really mostly post pictures of my dogs, as Carolina can attest to. Which is just uh, as good. <laughs> uh, but we I love it. Yeah. We're here for it. I'm on Twitter. Uh, it's sushi uh, underscore Krish, K-R-I-S-H. And then um, on Instagram, if you want to follow the company we keep, which is our movie. Yes. Um, that we are submitting to film festivals. It's um, TCWK Film on Instagram. And then my personal Instagram is like too long to spell. It's like my whole like it's like sushi Carl. We'll plug it. We'll plug it. Yeah. We'll plug it. <laughs> but definitely everyone follow the company you keep because we keep. Yeah. And if you want and... pictures of my dogs, you can go on the other things. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Fem Regard Podcast. 
If you like what you hear, tune in every Friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the Fem Fam on Patreon. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.